Great, thank you. So I'm going to chair this session. Um, and we're going to have uh, three presentations uh, to kick off uh, looking at uh, what AAAF looks like in four years. Um, so the first one from Julie is going to be looking at 3D. Uh, this is one of the kind of more active uh, community groups uh, looking at how we can add 3D to AAAF. Uh, and in the near future, uh, they hope to move to a technical group, uh, which will look at extending the specification. Uh, so I'm hoping Julie's going to kind of give us a picture of uh, where we're going to be with 3D in four years. And just before we start uh, with that presentation, um, just what I mentioned um, before we broke uh, was that we're looking for input from you as well. So at the end of the notes document, which I'm just going to paste into the chat, uh, there's a place where you can add your ideas. Um, so we're really looking at um, in four years time, uh, what do you hope the, the AAA specifications will support? Uh, or uh, tools generated by the community. Uh, and this is all in the kind of wider question of how do we keep AAAF current? Um, so while you listen to the, the three uh, presentations that we've got now, if you can have a think about those topics and add some comments on the end, uh, we'll uh, come back to that uh, after the presentations. Um, so I can, if, I can pass over to Julie, who is from um, Duke University and is one of the 3D chairs uh, alongside uh, Ronald Haynes and Ed Silverton. Uh, and she's going to talk about um, Triple F 3D reframing the infinite canvas. Thanks very much, Glenn. Yeah, let me get my screen sharing started. Okay, is that visible for everyone? Yes, it looks great. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Julie Winchester. Uh, I I'm from Duke University. I work with the Morphosource 3D Data Digital Repository there. I'm the product manager and lead repository dev, uh, but I'm also part of the IIIF 3D community group, and I'm going to be giving our update, telling you a little bit about who we are and, you know, some of our thoughts about what IIIF could look like four years from now. Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, important to have the IIIF in 3D as appropriate for the IIIF 3D group. Uh, so the community group is led by co-chairs Ed Silverton, uh, Nimacine, lead developer Universal Viewer, Ronald Haynes from Cambridge, and myself. I believe that they are all present and hopefully will be participating in the discussion. Uh, we meet monthly. We have general calls monthly. We also have special calls at various points during the month. Uh, the theme of all of these tends to be knowledge sharing and discussion. We have a broad range of participants involved, though, as a theme I'll keep coming back to, we are a very open group. We're definitely interested in having more participate, more um, interested participating members. And we are right now working to meet the requirements of a technical specific specification group, which uh, we're trying to do a lot of this work out in the open, so we have an overall sort of group progress tracker at the GitHub link there. So of the things that, that we have been doing, sort of thinking about what we're doing in the last quarter of this year and the things that we're going to be doing through 2022 and onwards, uh, we're, we're engaged in a lot of doing technical and community documentation around 3D use cases, sketching out designs of how IIIF 3D could work and creating some, some new demos. And hopefully those will lead to some proposals. And at some point, you know, maybe end of this year, beginning of next year, at some point there, we would hopefully like to transition to being a technical standards group um, so that this sort of iterative process can lead forward to proposals for how uh, IIIF APIs might be expanded to better support 3D which sort of leads us right into this idea, this theme for this session of, you know, what, what does IIIF look like in four years? Since we're the 3D group, I think it's reasonable for us to talk about what does IIIF 3D look like in four years? But in order to do so, we would kind of be remiss uh, not to say that, that there is a little way where you can say, how does IIIF 3D look now? Because there are some resources that are using IIIF manifests or similar to IIIF manifests, we can sort of call these IIIF-ish manifests uh, to put 3D content out in the world. Royal Pavilion and Museums, their collection explorer has 3D assets like this photogrammetry model of a mounted bird specimen. Uh, the exhibit.so platform 
uh, has a Jane Austen digital exhibit that has a really cool 3D model of Jane Austen's writing desk depicted there. And Morphosource, the repository where I work, we wrap 3D preview assets in IIIF manifests uh, on a production scale. So we have about 150,000 media, most of which are 3D. So those are models and actually CT MRI volumes. But, you know, it might be reasonable to look at this and say, oh, well, IIIF can do 3D, so we can all just go home on this particular topic. But all of these uses are sort of pressing at the boundaries of what's possible to be done with the IIIF API. And there are also limitations of what can be done. So there's, there's plenty of room for growth in the future. And when thinking about those future uses, uh, a very natural place to start are use cases or user stories. Um, at the previous annual meeting in, in June, um, we talked a little bit more technically about how some of these things, some of the basic, you know, applying IIIF to 3D could be accomplished. I'm gonna focus more on the user stories that we've been working on as part of our movement towards a, a TSG, but we'd also be happy during the rest of the discussion session to talk about the, the how do you accomplish this from a technical perspective. So we've started creating user stories uh, by the community group created a Google survey to collect 3D use cases from the community, which we logged those results and categorized them. We've also paid attention to a number of other community surveys that have happened relating to 3D. You can see some of them listed there. Hopefully there'll be a way to share these slides at some point because they're also linked in the slides. And working through all of this, we have a, a user story repository on GitHub, slightly different than the previous GitHub thing that I linked. And we've identified six core user stories that I'm gonna go through because I think they help to potentially define um, a scope for like sort of, ideally it would be wonderful if IIIF 3D could do all of these things in four years, which each of these user stories is specified using sort of a narrative format, using a persona, a need and a purpose. And I'm gonna go through each of these. And the first one is, is maybe the most basic. Um, it's at, to display a 3D model, being able to specify things like where the model is in space, how it's oriented and its scale. So the example here is as an online exhibit curator, uh, maybe I'd like to display a single 3D model specifying position, rotation and scale so that I can draw attention to a particular point of interest, like perhaps the face of this bird, um, which, Although you can kind of use IIIF right now to put a 3D model in a space, you cannot specify position, orientation, or scale. Uh, next would be to display multiple 3D models in a shared space. So say I'm an art historian working with statues that used to exist in a cathedral, but now are scattered in many places. And maybe their 3D models are even reposited in different museums, collections, databases. So as an art historian, I wanna be able to, to add multiple 3D models to a unified 3D environment, specifying each model's exact position, orientation, and scale. And in doing so, that allows me to visualize the placement of those statues in a cathedral, which is their original context. Um, this is also, we sometimes think of this as like the fragment example, where if you have an artifact that has been broken into fragments, this would allow you to bring those together in a virtual space, uh, just using IIIF manifests. Moving on from this, we'd also like to be able to combine 3D models um, alongside other types of media. So 2D images and AV content. So let's say I'm a biology educator working with a 3D mesh of a Tyrannosaurus skull, which you can see up there on the top right. Maybe I wanna combine that with a 2D image of the actual skull. Uh, maybe I wanna combine it with a CT scan, sort of a video going through a CT scan, which that's a video going through like a human chest scan, not an actual Tyrannosaurus, but the other two are of that Tyrannosaurus specimen, uh, which would allow me to provide context for that 3D model showing its original source and creation process. Fourth, I'd like to be able to annotate displayed 3D models with commentary. So perhaps as a paleobiology researcher, I wanna annotate a photogrammetry scan of a fossil excavation landscape so that I can indicate the location of types of bones present in the scene. And the picture here is from, from Sketchfab. Um, someone very, very generously sort of put up a scan of this shoulder bone dig site. Uh, and maybe I'd like to be able to annotate that using a IIIF manifest. I'd also like to be able to say if, if I'm a visitor, so not just an exhibit creator or a researcher, if I'm an exhibit visitor, 
I would like to be able to obtain a URL that loads that 3D scene at a particular viewpoint so that I can share an interesting detail of an object with a friend. Maybe I'm looking at this fossil baboon 3D model and I want to say to my friend, wow, look how they've held up the different parts of the skull using balsa wood. I had no idea that that's something paleontologists do in order to sort of recontextualize things. And it would be nice to be able to have a URL that allows you to do that. And then finally, um, being able to display multiple 3D models in their own viewports, in their own 3D spaces that can be rotated and manipulated independently. So perhaps as a citizen science coordinator, I'd like to provide citizen scientists with a comparative view of two 3D models where each model is in its own space, where each model can be rotated independently so that the project participants can compare and contrast those two models independently. Maybe the two models, um, you know, even though this Tyrannosaurus rex skull and the fossil baboon skull are quite different, maybe I want them to identify similarities. So those are our, our six core user stories. Um, and in a way, it's, it's very straightforward to be like, okay, well, that, that seems relatively straightforward. But any, anytime you sort of open, uh, start working with 3D, you sort of begin to get into like a Pandora's box of complexity. And I'm not going to go all the way through this, but this is just to sort of give a, a scattershot impression of, of the many different axes and variables that are, that are in play here. Um, and, and so because of that complexity, because of all this stuff, uh, as sort of working towards the TSG, uh, we are working for, on a number of things like those user stories, creating a group charter, uh, finding institutions, publishing 3D models, willing to implement experiments, creating initial technology demos, and also analyzing and describing all of the various requirements related to, to 3D. And we've started to make progress in all these areas but um, more effort continues to be needed. So honestly, please come join the group, help out, participate in discussion. It all, it all helps. It's just some references from before. And also these are just some links uh, related to some of the things I've talked about. Thank you very much. That's great, thank you. And thank you for showing those uh, visual use cases. They look brilliant. Um, so is there any immediate reaction uh, before we go on to the next one? Yeah, I agree with Ben. Really impressive foundation work, foundational work. Great. We'll move on to the next one. If you've got specific questions, though, do feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, so the next presentation is from Chifumi uh, from Kyoto University Library Network and Kiyonori from the University of Tokyo. Um, it would be about one o'clock in the morning for them, so I, I don't think they're on the call, um, but they have sent a video. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen now and show you the video. So let me know if you hear the sound. First of all, thank you very much for giving us a wonderful opportunity to make a presentation in this session. We, Chifumi Nishioka and Kiyonori Nagasaki, will make a presentation with the title Toward Discovery of Added Value to Tribal Resources. First, we would like to mention about the characteristics of the Tribal Committee in Japan. In these years, researchers, especially in digital humanities, have led the adoption of Tribal in Japan, while the university libraries and research libraries do it in many other countries. Thus, different platforms, collections, and software, such as the Triple F Creation Platform and the Digital Fujikawa, have been developed by researchers in order to facilitate scholars. So, please note that most contents of this presentation are made from the perspective of scholars. This is the outline of this presentation. First, we present the reciprocal links between the SAT database and the Kyoto University Rural Materials Digital Archive as a showcase in which both users and an institution that disseminate images through Triple Drive have gained benefit. Thereafter, 
we mention reference to privacy policy and the citation framework for triple resources as what we hope the triple specification and tools. They are motivated by the showcase mentioned before. Then let's start from the reciprocal links. The reciprocal links have been generated in a collaboration between the SAT database committee, a community of researchers, and the Kyoto University Library Network. The SAT database is a full text search service for the text of 85 volumes of the Taisho Shinshu Daisokyo are provided by the SAT committee. The Taisho Shinshu Daisokyo is a definitive edition of the East Asian Buddhist scriptures, including Buddhist canons and Chinese, Japanese, and Korean commentaries used by scholars. The reciprocal links connect a bibliography page on the Kyoto University Rare Materials Digital Archive and the corresponding page on the SAT database so that users can refer to full text on the SAT database. So how were the reciprocal links generated? The reciprocal links were generated based on metadata that have been provided by researchers on the Tripref Manifest for Buddhist Studies. The Tripref Manifest for Buddhist Studies is a platform that collects over 8,000 Tripref Manifest relevant to Buddhist studies from different institutions around the world. In the field of Buddhist studies, there has been a practice to assign catalog numbers to each piece of a resource so that scholars can compare different versions. The platform enables researchers to register the triple manifest of resources related to Buddhist studies and encourages them to browse images and add metadata including the catalog numbers, volume numbers, and line numbers to the images. This added metadata is delivered to the SAT database and is used to generate reciprocal links between SAT database and the corresponding bibliography pages in the Kyoto University Rare Material Digital Archive. From this slide, Chihumi Nishioka will make the presentation so in summary, this collaboration shows a pathway in which users add values such as catalog numbers and volume numbers to resources, and the added value is given back to institutions that made the resources available. So we see that the distribution of the resources through triple IF brings benefits to both users and institutions that disseminate the resources. To discover value added by users, some institutions conduct user analysis. Specifically, they conduct the analysis based on triple IF API logs. For instance, we have made the user analysis using triple IF image API logs and visualized the results of the user analysis at heat map. To conduct these kinds of analysis in practice, institutions that distribute resources to triple IF should present their privacy policies to users to clearly state how triple IF API logs and other server logs will be handled. Privacy policies should declare, for instance, what data institution collect and how the data will be used. As triple IF APIs enable interoperable use of resources, there is a case in which different privacy policies should be applicable in different elements in a workspace. For instance, in this case, the viewer is provided by Kyoto University. On the other hand, the resource is from University of Tokyo. So the privacy policy of the University of Tokyo should be applied to this element. We think that we need a way to present respective institutions' privacy policies to users. 
One possible solution to present a privacy policy is to add a field that refers to an applicable privacy policy to image information and triple I presentation objects. In addition, we would like to mention about citations. In general, citation present the use of resources, especially in scholarship. For scholarly articles, there have been a well-established frameworks that identify correct and present citations. For instance, on Google Scholar, users can explore scholarly articles and in which publications they are cited. We think that IIII community can discuss and make recommendations about how IIII resources should be cited. Furthermore, it is desirable to implement a citation button on a viewer. For example, if a user clicks cite this image button, a text including metadata such as title and URI will be shown up. In this case, we use a canvas URI as identifier. This is the final slide and summarizes our presentation. IIIF community has been developed in Japan, led by scholars in digital humanities. So different software and tools have been developed to facilitate scholars. Through the development, we observed that the distribution of resources through IIIF has brought benefits to both users and institutions that disseminate the resources when users pass on added value of resources to the institutions. To discover the added value, we think that we need to facilitate usage analysis based on IIIF API logs and establish a citation framework for IIIF resources. For usage analysis, we need to present a policy that states how logs are handled. One possible solution is to add a field that refers to policy to IIIF image API and IIIF presentation API objects. In terms of citation framework, we need to discuss and make recommendations about how, how IIIF resources should be cited and implement citation button on a viewer. We hope to contribute to further adoption as well as development of IIIF and are looking forward to collaborating with you. So thank you very much for listening our presentation. And thank you both to uh, Chifumi and um, Kiyonori for submitting that presentation. So the, the two things that they raised were um, citation and privacy policies. Uh, and I wonder if I can just um, float these to see if uh, they're use cases that other people have. Uh, and first of all, the privacy policies. So they've got a particular use case about um, analyzing the logs of IIIF image APIs to generate those heat maps, which is a really cool use case of IIIF. But I think it's, it's also a wider issue about um, the combination between um, the privacy policies in a viewer and um, a manifest. And I wonder if people can just note if, if they have some of the use cases. Seeing a wide uh, shared use case. And how about the citation one? Uh, kind of expect that be more um, supported. So that's the the proposal they're putting there is there a better way of citing IIIF resources? Um, so we do have in the image API kind of ways to um, target particular images, um, but is there a way to kind of convert that into a citation format um, that can be added to viewers? Do other people also have that type of use case?
we got one thumbs up. So that quite a follow for privacy policy for server logs, uh, asked Richard on the chat. Um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned there, kind of particular use case is looking at, um, looking at the image API server logs, uh, and they're able to generate kind of a heat map to see which part of images uh, are most popular. And that can be really helpful for generating thumbnails. Um, so their privacy um, policy would be able to say that, you know, we will um, process the image logs, um, not to identify personal information, but to be able to just generate uh, which part of the image um, is, um, is being looked at most by the majority of people. And Anne also has got the citation question. And Mark mentions um, broadly interest in the usage of metrics for AAAF resources. And Mike mentions um, asked about the ability to use DOIs for images. And combined with that place, that could be interesting, yes, to look at maps to see where people are most looking at. Yeah. Great. So keep those both those topics in your mind as we go into the next session. Um, but now we're going to move on to Stace Maples, who's um, from Stanford University and is also a co-chair of the uh, AAAF Maps Group with Elliot and Virginia. Uh, and he's going to be talking about um, where he sees um, AAAF in four years, probably with a, a Maps focus. <laughs> probably. Um... <laughs> And uh, and bear with me. I am I'm recovering from a cold, a, a normal, everyday cold, which apparently we have we have back. It burned through um, my house over the weekend. Um, so hi everyone, uh, and and thanks for attending this session. My name is Stace Maples. I'm uh, at Stanford University and uh, one of the co-founders of this IIIF Maps uh, community. Uh, which was born uh, in 2020, really, uh, I believe, at the um, uh, in a, a meeting just after the Geo Blacklight community meeting that we hold here at Stanford annually, uh, the Geo for Live camp. And uh, these are our um, IIIF Maps uh, community chairs. Uh, um, much of the work that I'm going to talk about um, and uh, uh, that has been done and will be done is uh, is is actually being done by the folks you see on on this uh, slide. Uh, in particular, Barrett Span, Brian Haberberger, uh, Michael Appleby, and Elliot Jordan have done the yeoman's work on much of this uh, um, IIIF maps uh, content that we're uh, that I'll talk about today. And uh, and I am uploading my slides uh, at the moment, and so I'll share the link to um, download these slides or access them as soon as that's uh, uploaded. So you'll be able to get to these these links. I've linked out to our maps group and our um, and our TSG group here. If you're interested in joining us, please uh, um, please do feel free. Um, so where we are now uh, in terms of IIIF and MAPS is we've just recently had our NavPlace extension approved. Uh, and this is an extension to um, describe how to include, how to ship GeoJSON-LD uh, with um, IIIF content. Uh, in, in particular, how to, uh, how to associate the geographic location uh, that might be uh, associated with a particular IIIF object, whether it be uh, a map, as in this example, uh, or um, whether it be other types of objects that you could uh, associate with geographic locations. Um, and, the, uh, and the explicit purpose is really to, uh, is to be able to display those, um, those locations uh, in, a, in a specialized client. And what you see here is um, one of our map chairs, Elliot Jordan's version of a, uh, a Mirador viewer uh, demonstrating how the nav place uh, extension is used to associate geography uh, with particular um, IIIF content, whether it's maps or, or um, event flyers, things of that sort, that have geographies associated with them. Um, we also have a number of uh, 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 demonstrations uh, linked here. Uh, uh, Mike Appleby's uh, IIIF Heroku app is uh, another Mirador-based uh, version of the, of the viewer. 
and um, and then uh, Matthias has been working on integrating Triple I F into Chronoscope as well. Um, I also want to uh, just briefly shout out um, to Aaron Cope and the Who's on First project, um, who have all also um, already implemented. Uh, support for IIIF nav place in the who's on first uh, um, platform. Let's see. So let's talk about now where are we going and uh, where we're going is hopefully um, shifting to the second major component of the work that we define for ourselves at our uh, at our first triple IF maps meeting um, the the two components were uh, associating GeoJSON geographies with triple IF um, objects and then uh, working directly with cartographic material in triple IF and so now we've turned our attention to that uh, to that second component and uh, we're beginning to flesh out the necessary uh, infrastructure for a GeoRef extension, um, which will allow uh, users and providers to take their IIIF maps and warp those maps and provide co-location uh, uh, capabilities with other geographic content or with other uh, IIIF maps, in, in fact. Um, thus far, this work has really been done mostly by Barrett Spann uh, and, uh, and his collaborators. Um, you can find uh, much of this at allmaps.org. Um, what you're seeing in the, um, in the viewer in the slide right now is a demonstration of some of the early work that uh, Barrett's been doing on this idea of warping IIIF resor uh, tiled resources on the fly. Um, and so uh, what you're seeing here is, uh, in this case, the viewer where we're viewing a triple IF map on top of, uh, of a, uh, another map. Uh, great, it just looped here. So here in the interface, we can use triple IF to mask the, the component, the part of the uh, map that needs to be geo-referenced. Then we can actually do the geo-referencing, finding points of coincidence between uh, locations in the map object as well as uh, points of coincidence in a reference map, in this case, uh, OpenStreetMap. And then those uh, results can be laid on top of, uh, of a map as well. Um, and so this is all triple IF sort of native here. What's happening is uh, the um, uh, the content that's necessary to take uh, IIIF uh, tiles and warp them on the fly to uh, another geographic uh, component are all contained within a JSON file. Um, and so uh, what's really actually kind of cool about this is it's not necessary for the provider of the map uh, to provide the information about the geo-referencing that can be done entirely separately uh, from the provisioning of the map. And so, and so this infrastructure, for instance, takes, uh, um, makes it available to any maps that are uh, online, whether that provider has um, uh, created the IIIF geo-referencing infrastructure or not. It's all external to the provisioning of uh, the IIIF objects themselves. Um, of course, from this point, the next desire would be to be able to uh, place these kinds of maps, uh, these triple IF maps, into uh, a geographic context in uh, some of the industry standard clients for working with geographic data. And so that work has begun as well. Here you see in an observable notebook, Bert's worked out how to uh, sort of shim the triple IF uh, tiles uh, and, and turn them into XYZ tiles, which is a, a pretty standard way of serving geo-referenced um, image uh, data. And here you can see I'm taking an endpoint from his example, modifying it slightly for the, the template that um, ArcGIS Online uses. And then in just a few seconds here, you should see native IIIF content coming into ArcGIS.com uh, as a map layer. Of course, you have to do the metadata first. So, 
And there we go. And in comes, uh, and so this is a layer being served live from a triple IF endpoint. It's been geo-referenced using a single uh, JSON, small JSON file, and then it's being shimmed through BERT's uh, um, XYZ tile server uh, coming directly into uh, ArcGIS.com, which I actually think is uh, kind of amazing. All right, so what do we want for the future? Um, so as you can see, much of the work of georeferencing and the, and the infrastructure that's necessary for georeferencing is, is already well underway and, uh, and worked out. Um, and so uh, I will say that these map futures are, are out of my brain primarily um, and uh, uh, in consultation with some of our map chairs. But where I think we're going uh, over the course of the next year is, uh, first of all, working on getting the GeoRef um, extension uh, completed and accepted as an extension to IIIF, but in parallel to that, working on uh, viewers, of course. Um, uh, but more importantly than that, and, uh, I, I think what we want to focus on is management software, actually, uh, because it occurs to me that the kinds of projects that we want to undertake with this particular uh, type of uh, extension um, are, are pretty intensive. I've, I've undertaken some large georeferencing projects before, and one of the real bottlenecks in, in managing those is a good software platform for managing that. And, and one of the things that IIIF provides, IIIF manifests provide, is an excellent basis for wrapping a management uh, software platform around this idea of georeferencing maps. Um, the manifests have essentially everything we need in them to, to manage the queuing, uh, the curation of collections of maps for georeferencing, to manage the queuing of those maps, uh, and to manage the users, uh, the end users who will be georeferencing the maps, whether they be crowdsourcing or ex um, sort of expert crowdsourcing. Um, the image that I've got on this slide is actually of um, humanitarian open street map. And, and the reason I've got their, uh, their task manager in this slide is because I think it provides a really excellent model for, uh, uh, for the, this idea of managing these very large, uh, very complex projects at scale. Um, they essentially have created a platform where managers can create a job, create instructions about that job, uh, customize how the job can be done in the queues, and, and break it up into small bite-sized pieces that can be managed by you know, uh, 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 dispersed users and, and contributors. And I think that something like this is the kind of idea that uh, we're beginning to talk about in the IIIF Maps community, um, building something where we can create these geo-referenced map collections at scale. Um, the other thing that's coming in the futures is documentation, more cookbook recipes for NAV Place, uh, more good documentation on the work that we've done uh, with the NAV Place extension, examples uh, in the wild, and, uh, and beginning to uh, create uh, documentation for uh, the work that we're doing now with GeoRef. I can see I'm, my video is bugging out a little bit. Can you give me a thumbs up, Glenn, if my sound is okay? All right, good deal. Um, oh, well, well, we can hear you. I don't know if there's sound on the video. Uh, there's no sound on the video. I oh, okay, it off. good. Thanks. <laughs> um, and then for myself, this is uh, uh, this adoption in industry part is one of my goals for over the the course of the next couple of years. Is really, um, you know, one of the shortcomings of the ArcGIS.com platform has always been its uh, inability to uh, manage these kinds of uh, this kind of content uh, very well in ArcGIS.com. There are cumbersome ways to get this kind of uh, cartographic content scanned, georeference maps into ArcGIS.com, um, but I think this is a really great candidate for integration. And and over the next couple of years, uh, I intend to uh, inter. You you know, uh, begin talking to these industry folks that I know about the possibility of implementing some of these IIIF um, uh, extensions and technologies that we're working on, because I think, uh, you know, 
particularly for ArcGIS.com, there's already this gigantic corpus of content from Old Maps Online and DavidRumsey.com and, and the dozens and dozens of other institutions who are literally putting hundreds of thousands of, of maps online uh, for use through IIIF. I think there's a huge trove of content there that many of these companies don't realize is just waiting to be leveraged. Uh, and, and hopefully um, we can sell them on this and, and, uh, and, and possibly get them contributing to the, uh, to the community as well. The last thing that I put in here actually um, is a link uh, to a PDF. And again, I'll share these slides. But, um, and the reason I put this in there is this is a, this is a project of uh, uh, you know, the, the city of New York to uh, assess brownfields in Red Hook. Uh, in Brooklyn. And one of the things that I think is really important to note about this particular project, this, uh, this report, is that the primary source of data for this report was the Sanborn uh, fire insurance maps. Um, and, and I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the geo-referenced versions of those uh, Sanborn fire insurance maps were obtained from the New York Public Library and the work that uh, Bert Spann and Tim Waters and a bunch of other people did, um, you know, a decade ago on something called the Map Warper. And, and so this is a report that has real impact um, and, you know, these are uh, these are, are are more than just beautiful cartographic objects. They are, in fact, data. And and the reason I'm so passionate about these kinds of of augmentation services that we're creating through the Maps Group and IIIF is because I do believe that when we can take the content that we've all scanned and augment it in these ways, we we go a long way to releasing that data from its sort of what I, you know, always jokingly talk about as an obsolete data format, which is paper, right? Um, and, and we make these things uh, much more useful uh, in, in very impactful ways sometimes. And so if you take a look at this Red Hook Brooklyn uh, PDF, uh, when you have time, you'll, uh, if you run a, a control F and search for Sanborn, you'll find that it's uh, the Sanborn fire insurance maps are, are referenced dozens of times in this report. And so there's a great deal of utility to this kind of work is uh, beyond, you know, creating really wow, you know, uh, presentations of, uh, of the beautiful content that we have. And again, I just want to uh, uh, shout out to all of the chairs and the uh, and the community members who do the bulk of the work. Um, I really just jabber about it uncontrollably occasionally. Um, and the most of the technical work in in this group has really been born uh, by the by the people whose names are on this slide, other than mine. Uh, and uh, and as you can see, there's a great deal of really fantastic work already going on. Uh, in the IIIF Maps community, and and hopefully uh, this uh, this new GeoRef extension will be ready to um, uh, show off to the community in a um, in a in a more uh, sort of um, um, codified way soon. I think that's all I have, Glenn. If there are questions. Great, thanks, Stace. Um, exciting to see what you're working on and and what the future holds. Uh, are there any immediate reactions to Stace for Stace? Okay, well, feel free to continue discussion in the chat. Um, We'll switch over to the uh, list of um, questions and ideas in the document. Um, I can see the last couple don't have names next to you, so can, if you make sure you put names to them, I can call them you. Uh, ben, do you want to go first with uh, your idea? Oh, okay, yeah, sure, thanks. Um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory if you read it, but I just think from my perspective, looking at the next four years of IIIF, I'm thinking about growth and adoption rather than enhanced features. And so from that perspective, I think there's still basic tooling that's missing in the community's uh, collection of solutions. 
um, which is slowing down the potential for broader adoption. And so, I mean, my proposal or my thought about how to handle that is to basically create a IIIF product or web app. You could even call it a playground if you don't want to commit to um, having it be production, but that, that handles all the basic tooling needed to produce a IIIF object. So I'll stop there. Okay, any reactions, comments? Well, you know, I, I will say I, I wonder as, as someone, I, I'll admit I'm, I'm not, I think it could be cool. I'm, I'm not it involved a triple IF at a level where I feel like I'm invested in these things, but I do wonder if, if triple IF is meant to be an open standard. If does, does that inevitably, I guess, presuppose some kind, does that like almost involve triple IF giving official sort of condoning or supporting a particular tech stack and does that like disadvantage possibly other open source projects like is that something that should be considered i feel like it would be difficult for the committee to sort of figure out what tech stack would want to be chosen there just some some thoughts yeah i think the tech stack question is a real challenge for adoption because for any individual institution which has full-time developer resources, the tech stack is defined, the developer time is available. So I'm really talking about beyond um, institutional implementation to thinking about individuals, small projects, uh, hobbyists, anyone who doesn't have access to a full-time developer with a defined tech stack. Mm -hmm. It's, it is an, it's a really interesting question. I know we've um, discussed it in the Triple F staff about um, how much we should go into this and how much the community provides the tools and possibly these services. And Regis, I've noticed you've put in a comment, um, but you're also involved, I think, in, in a kind of a Triple F solution in France. So maybe you can talk on, on that as well as your question. Oh, it doesn't have sound. Okay. <laughs> So I'll read out his uh, question. Uh, in addition to that, having built in support for IIIF in main research data repositories. Um, so there are kind of various um, places where you can put your data and it'd be great if they would support IIIF. Um, so yes, I think it's important. And um, IIIF 360 was the uh, project that I was talking about. I don't know if you can put a link in the chat to uh, Regis. Um, right, so next, uh, Anne, do you want to talk about uh, your idea? Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I, uh, I I have to 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 admit that I'm not not a developer of that kind of stuff. So I'm and I'm still new new to Triple Life. So I'm I'm always worried if I talk some tot totally wrong stuff. But however, I think um, as a researcher, it could be for us um, really really interesting if we. Uh, the IIIF community starts to think more about people not bringing together manifests but just using them and really like a bit like like we use books so that we really have um, all this manifest can use them and bring them into a viewer like like some viewer and just start off from a manifest and I, I really um, I was very much with the um, presentation from the Japanese colleagues because I think they very very good broad the view from the researchers point of view so this was quite clear for me and we especially i'm fighting a bit with um installing a server um or viewer um because quite often researchers don't have the ability to install things um at their universities there are a lot of restrictions and i think this could be more more light weighted and more adopting IIIF manifest in the flow of research material. Um, I think that's what I'm thinking about. That's great. And uh, to be honest, the researcher perspective is, is particularly important. It's kind of the reason that we do a lot of the IIIF um, tools and the way we implement things is, is to support research. So um, they're really valid points. And um, 
I think, you know, a lot of the viewers like Universal Viewer and, and Mirador, um, you can kind of take your manifest into those and view them. Um, but I'm, I'm also in some ways surprised that we haven't seen more kind of shared tools where people can um, kind of collaborate on, on things and have conversations around content. Um, is there anything else that anyone has uh, noticed is missing? Yeah, maybe, I'm sorry, but maybe really something like, and this is not, not a tool and maybe not a standard, but perhaps there should be more communication about, about IIIF and about changes of versions and all this kind of stuff so that you really, as, as the ones who bring together manifests, have a, have a better idea about the people using it and what we are implementing. This, this is really, I think, this is a huge work to do still. <laughs> Yes, I agree. There's a huge amount of work to do. Okay, just looking at the time, can we go on to Emma? Do you want to present your point? Yeah, sure. I think just kind of, well, yeah, this is something that I feel like we've been revisiting off and on, and I've certainly been thinking about off and on, but just the idea of the, the metadata panel that most IIIF viewers have, and whether it's serving the function that it was intended for as sort of a, a it not particularly specifically defined catch-all space for whatever metadata people want to add. Um, whether researchers are using it, whether institutions are finding it sufficient or if they need to add information elsewhere alongside the viewer, um, and whether there are things like key fields like um, Kianori and Chumi presented that could um, be called out in a more helpful way for researchers. And are you kind of calling for research into that to see which are shared between the I guess so. Yeah, I guess yeah. it would be. I know we keep doing sort of implementation surveys, but I, I was just thinking that I would like to look a little more closely at what all the implementers are doing with the metadata panel and whether, yeah, what researchers are doing. Mm -hmm. no, that's a good suggestion. I think um, the manuscript group looked a while back at um, maybe creating kind of shared um, set of metadata fields for manuscripts, but it, yeah, it would be interesting to see which which are used and if there are ones that we need to call out further in the AAA specification. So, yeah. Any other comments? Yeah, there? and if the yeah. if the viewers, if the sort of interface is working for people, I know this is more of a question for the viewer developers, but um, if there is a barrier to use for that, or yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think discovery for humans is probably where that should go. Yes. Thank you. Uh, on to Tom. Uh, you've got two. I don't know whether you want to do both. Um, yeah, I, could, I could combine. It was just an observation about citation, and I don't know enough about academic citation practice to really have an answer myself. But the content state spec is a means of providing a, a pointer to any part of any triple life resource. Is that what role does that have to play in citation or citation practice of triple life resources? I mean, it doesn't look like the kind of thing you would read in a printed citation because it's going to be either chunk of JSON or some sort of encoded state. Um, but it is, you know, it has the, the ability to point at anything. Uh, that was just the first point. And the second point, I think, touches on something you were saying, Glenn. It was like, well, why, why haven't you seen an environment in which people can collaborate on stuff? Or, you know, I think without any further development of the specs, you know, it would be great in four years' time to have, you know, People in you know um, students, uh, you know school children, or in a professional context, people using Triple IF in really polished tools without having any idea that they're using Triple IF because it's kind of become ubiquitous. You know that cultural heritage resources are available in it. You know if you're a teacher, you might know that uh, you can get Triple IF resources and use them to assemble coursework, but most of the consumers don't know it; they're just using it. Um, and, and, and just that kind of jump to a level of polish in tooling and breadth of tooling and capabilities of tooling that start addressing all these different use cases that are out there. So I think that kind of, yeah, it doesn't need necessarily new tech, it needs um, adoption. Yeah, I think great points. Any, any reactions to that? 
Um, I have a reaction is just, I think that final bullet point question, what is IIIF's role in adoption? And I guess maybe that's sort of an outreach. I mean, currently that's being handled by the outreach group, but um, all these questions revolve around to me, the, the theme of centralization and unification versus decentralization and customization. And I don't know if the consortium has a position or an answer, but it's certainly a challenging one. I don't know if you want to come back on that, Tom, but maybe um, I think you know, the Triple F Consortium is funded by the community for the community. And so um, it's something that, you know, we do think about. And um, I think if the community was looking at some sort of centralization then there's potential, we could think about it, but it's just a huge tension in the Triple F community about whether we, you know, support others to create the tools or whether um, centrally there is something uh, that needs to be there, but it's a big wide question, yeah. Trip, did you want to come in? I've seen you've unmuted. No, that must have been just a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so the last uh, few minutes, uh, we've run out of ideas. So I've got a few which I'm going to throw in there. They're kind of like bombshells to see if um, people are awfully offended by these or if they support them. Um, so the first one um, that I've kind of come across in different uh, sessions, but particularly about... Um, Again, the researcher angle, uh, and this came out from the, the national collection discussions and the early on uh, IIIF research discussions. Uh, and this was looking at um, how do we provide a publication version of a IIIF manifest? So the use cases, if you're a researcher who's um, worked for many years kind of annotating and analyzing a particular manifest, uh, and you've written your paper and you want to kind of publish your, uh, your work as research data for others to replicate, um, is there a way to kind of um, archive that manifest uh, along with the images and the annotations uh, in a format that you can put into a data repository um, that maybe people can comment and uh, reuse and uh, look at your research? Uh, is there a way that we can use triple S standards to kind of create that long term preservation of that, that work you've done? Um, so I wonder, have others seen this use case? Um, is it only me or do other people come across this issue as well? I was wondering, Glenn, whether or not, judging from Ben's comment in the document, that that might be the subject of his lightning talk. Uh, but we might we don't wanna we don't wanna spoil the fun. <laughs> I'll just say it's not my idea is not quite that developed, but um, it's a really good question, Glenn. And for instance, a use case would be the Metascripta project. That's exactly what. Deborah was proposing with the um, recent uh, NHPRC funding was to build a way to serialize slash um, archive or whatever the right word is, a, a publication version. So that at least for, for our project, that was a consideration. Uh, Robert, did you come in? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just a clarification from your point. I mean, do you mean that uh, saving the image server in case it goes down, like image archive or memento or something? Because I mean, otherwise everything should be should be stable. So is, is yeah, it an, about that yeah. point specifically? In an ideal world, um, all the links would be stable, um, but things do change over the time, and there, there is concern um, that if you're kind of using a uh, using these manifests with these links, um, that you might publish your book, and then ten years down the time, uh, the manifest links won't work. Um, so, is there a way of kind of creating an archival version uh, which you can archive along with the publication? Um, so, less kind of memento online type of thing, and more of an offline static copy of. This is what the manifest looked like when I was doing my research. Um, we're just running out of time. Um, Ronald, did you want to say something quickly or did you want to put it in the notes? I can put it in the notes, thanks. Great, uh, thank you. So um, yeah, keep putting these questions uh, and these thoughts in, uh, in the document. 
Uh, we're going to have a break of um, 15, correct me if I'm wrong, Meg. We're going to have a break of um, 15 minutes now before we go into the uh, final session, which is uh, going to be chaired by Simeon, uh, looking at the scope and reflection of discussion uh, and looking at the general kind of scope of IIIF. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, we'll see everyone in uh, 15 minutes at 2.15 Eastern time. I'm going to stop the recording for now and we'll see you in a few.